In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to make this image of a wooden cup. I'll be using Blender version 2.68a. I'm going to be using the Cycles Render Engine, so you should make sure that you have it before starting the project. To check this, come over here to this drop-down menu and verify that one of the selections is Cycles Render. If you don't have it, then you can go to blender.org to download the latest version of Blender. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. I'll expand this panel on the right by dragging the edge. We don't need the cube, so I'm going to delete it. To do that, right-click on the cube to select it, then press the X key, and then select Delete. By the way, if you ever make a mistake and want to undo your last operation, just press Ctrl Z. Now let's add a sphere. So from the Add menu, select Mesh, and then UV Sphere. I'm going to zoom in to see this better, and in Blender you can zoom by using your scroll wheel. I'm going to be changing this sphere into a simple cup, and to do that I need to be in edit mode. So click here and select edit mode. Also click here and select wireframe. Now let's switch to front view. So from the view menu, select front. Currently the view is using perspective projection. To make this easier to work with, I'll be switching to orthographic projection by clicking on the view menu and then selecting View Perspective Orthographic. In Blender, things that are selected are highlighted with an orange color. If you press the A key, it will toggle between deselecting everything and selecting everything. We want to deselect everything. Now we're going to select the top area of the sphere, so press the B key. This will allow us to select vertices by drawing a box around them. So position the cursor about right here, and then press and hold the left mouse button and draw a selection box around these vertices. Then release the button. Now press the X key to delete and then select vertices. Next we're going to flatten the bottom of the cup. So press the B key and draw a selection box around these vertices. Then click the scale button. Now press the Z key to restrict the scaling operation to the Z axis then type 0 followed by the Enter key. Now grab the blue arrow and drag it down to stretch out the cup. Let's also make the bottom of the cup a little narrower. So click on the Scale button, and now you can move your mouse to adjust the size. When you're done, click the left mouse button. Now we have the basic shape of the cup, but I want the cup to look like a really old wooden cup, and so I'm going to deform the shape a little bit. So to do that, Click on the Select menu and select Random. This will randomly select some of the vertices on the cup. Now click on the Scale button and then type 1.02 followed by the Enter key. We're done with Edit Mode for now, so switch back to Object Mode. Then switch from Wireframe to Solid. Now let's rotate the view to see this better. To rotate the view, hold down the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. Now let's smooth the surface out by clicking on the Smooth button. If you look at the top edge of the cup, you'll notice that it looks very thin, so let's add a thickness to it. So click on the Object Modifiers button, then click on Add Modifier and select Solidify. Then set the thickness value to 0.15. Now to help smooth this out a little more, click on the Add Modifiers button again. This time, select Subdivision Surface. Set both the View and Render values to 2. The View value sets the number of subdivisions for the view that you see here, and the Render value sets the number of subdivisions that will be used in the final render. Now let's add a surface for the cup to sit on. So from the Add menu, select Mesh, and then Plane. Let's make this plane really big. So click on the Scale button and type 100 followed by the Enter key. Now to position the plane, switch to front view. Now drag the blue arrow down until the plane is just below the cup. Now we can set the material for the plane. So click on the material button, and then click on the new button. This is what the material panel looks like when using Blender Render. We're going to use Cycles Render, so come up here and click on this menu, and then select Cycles Render. Now click on the Use Nodes button, then click here to set the color. 
I'm going to use an orange color. The next thing that we need to do is to set up the light source. So zoom out until you can see the lamp. And then right click on it to select it. Then drag the red arrow to center the lamp over the cup. Now switch to right side view. Then drag the green arrow until the lamp is in front of the cup. Now let's set some options for the lamp. So click on the object data button if it's not already selected. We're going to use the point lamp, which should already be selected by default. Set the size to three. Then click on the use nodes button. The strength value sets the intensity of the light. I'm going to use a value of 3000. Now let's set up the camera view. Start by going to the view menu and select camera. This is the view looking through the camera and it's the view that you will see when the image is rendered. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now let's make a change to the view properties that will allow us to rotate, zoom, and pan the view while looking through the camera. So from the view menu, select properties. Then add a check next to lock camera to view. Then to hide this panel, click on the view menu and select properties again. To position the view, I'll start by zooming in. Now I'll pan the view by holding down the shift key while pressing the middle mouse button. Now we're ready to apply a wood texture to the cup. This is a picture that I took of some wood and it's what I'm going to be using for the texture. You can find a link to it in the video description. We're currently using the default screen layout and I'm going to switch to the compositing layout. I'll also expand the bottom section a little and the right side panel as well. Now right click on the cup to select it. Then click on the Material button, and then click on the New button. Then click on this little button next to the white color and select Image Texture. Now click on the Open button so that we can load the image file. Next, navigate to the image file and select it. Then click on the Open Image button. Now that we've specified which image file to use, the next thing that we're going to do is to specify how the image will be mapped onto the cup. To do that, switch to edit mode. Now press the A key to deselect everything, and then press the A key again to select everything. Now from the mesh menu, select UV Unwrap. And you should see a list showing multiple ways to unwrap the cup. I'm going to select the first option, which is just called Unwrap. Over here in the window on the left, you can see how the cup was unwrapped onto the flat surface. Now click on this button and select the image file that we previously loaded. I'm going to zoom out until I can see the whole image. In order to see how the texture is being applied to the cup, click here and select Texture. Now to get a closer look, I'll zoom in a little. If you come over here to this window on the left, you can manipulate the unwrapped cup. For example, if I press the G key while in this window, I can move it while watching the results on the cup to the right. I then press the left mouse button when I'm done moving it. Now let's switch back to object mode. You can get a good view of how this is going to look by clicking here and selecting rendered. This is a rendered image that is rendered with a limited number of samples and so it renders relatively quickly. And every time that something changes, the image is rendered again. Now, if you look closely at the wood texture on the cup, you'll notice that it looks smooth. We can give the texture some depth by using displacement for the cup material. One easy way to add the displacement is to use the node editor, which is displayed in this window up here. So click on this round button to select shader nodes, and also make sure that this button that looks like a cube is selected. Let's move this block up out of the way. This node represents the image, and I'm going to use the color output for the displacement. To do this, use the left mouse button and drag a line from the color output to this displacement input. Now the wood texture on the cup has some depth. To show you the difference again, I'll disconnect this connection. The wood texture is smooth again. Now I'll reconnect it to restore the depth to the texture. 
Now using the color output of the image as the displacement has worked well for me whenever I've used wood textures, but I wouldn't expect it to work well for all textures. In some cases, it may be better to use a separate image for the displacement that has been specifically made for that purpose, but that's a topic for another video. I think that you'll find, however, that the method that I've shown here works well much of the time. Now let's switch back to the default screen layout. Let's also switch from solid to rendered. Everything looks good and I'm ready to render the final image, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save your project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. So from the file menu, select Save As. I'm going to name this wood.blend. Blend is the extension that Blender uses. Then click the Save As Blender File button. Now to render the image, click on the Render button. Then open the Sampling section. This section is called Integrator in some older versions of Blender. This value sets the number of render samples that will be used. I'm going to increase the value to 500. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now let's render the final image. So come back up here and click on the Render button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. This image will take a while to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished and this is the final image. To save the image, make sure that your cursor is over the image and press the F3 key. I'm going to name this wood.png. Then press the Save as Image button. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.